Okay, go. You could please take a moment now to stand and face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. God bless America and God bless our world. Good morning, Cardinals. Happy Monday to everyone. Hope and pray you had a blessed weekend. Uh, beautiful weather we're having um, and just praise God for the gift of, of the season of spring. Amen. And so as we embark in this week of, of our spiritual and academic journey, Cardinals, always remember to put on your Christ. Uh, hopefully you've developed some great spiritual and academic and uh, study habits uh, by way of making sure you make time for God first thing in the morning. Um, make sure that you make time for God at the end of the day. Make sure that you have a study schedule in place. Make sure that you have a routine of how often and when you're doing your homework. Make sure that you're reading, as these are all the hopes that we have for all of our students going into the latter part of this year, that even though even those skills that maybe were in place before, that they've actually become even more improved or enhanced. Uh, so let us continue to recognize that we have this amazing gift here called the brain. Uh, that, that God provides us and we should make every effort to use it to the best of our ability. Amen. And so just make sure that you're staying on top of everything. Um, I spent last week starting to look at grades primarily for middle school. Um, most of our kiddos are tracking pretty well. Got some uh, areas for improvement for some students, but I'll be checking elementary grades this week just to kind of see how things are looking as we want to make sure we end the year strong. Right. Amen. Um, making our parents pleased, our families pleased by the kind of grades that they anticipate or expect to see, and then of course the attributes, uh, how our behavior and conduct is as teachers put those grades in too. Remember Cardinals, all these things eventually become permanent files that are housed and, 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 and kept for many, many years as our eighth graders are discovering that all their records need to go off to their high schools uh, to, to either gain entrance or to determine honors classes, things of that kind. Uh, everything plays a part, Cardinals, so just make sure that you're doing your best as I try to encourage people to be mindful of, of some things like do your best, let God take care of the rest kind of thing. You just got to make sure that you are doing your best, Cardinals. Amen. And so before we begin our, our daily prayer, uh, let us take a moment to, let me take a moment, please, just to kind of reiterate what took place last week uh, with the shelter in place. Uh, CNM had an incident happening on their campus and APD notified us that we needed to go on and go into a shelter in place. Cardinals, I know that we regularly, or at least a couple of times, uh, practice a lockdown, which is more intense and more, uh, requires more silence and requires more uh, of, of a moment just to focus and, and be safe. Whereas a shelter in place, Cardinals, is a little bit different. It's a little more relaxed. Okay, so two different things, shelter in place and lockdown. Lockdown you're used to. Let me explain the shelter in place. The shelter in place just means that you can move about the, the building comfortably, change classes, continue to receive instruction, do homework projects, all those kinds of things, go to the restroom. The thing that's different with the shelter in place is you are not permitted to leave the building that you're in. So for instance, if we're at mass and a shelter in place is called, we remain in the church until the shelter in place is lifted. If we're in a gym in, if for PE or if we're in music class, uh, you remain in the gym for music class or PE until the shelter in place is lifted. And then of course all the rest of us who are here in this building, we're free to move about the building, you're just not allowed to go outside. That's the big difference, okay? So in a nutshell, shelter in place means you cannot go outside. And in last case, in last week's instance, there were two classes outside. We just called him inside into the cafeteria, closed the door, and we were all shelter in place. Amen. So uh, information was rolled out to your parents. And if they had any questions, I encourage them to give me a call to explain things in more detail if they would like. All right. Amen. 
So it's all about safety cardinals and it's all about us looking out for one another and making sure that we are mindful of our surroundings and at the same time just mindful of, of, of being safe and cautious, cautious when necessary. Amen. So thank you for that, Cardinals. <clears throat> if we could take a moment now to breathe in the Holy Spirit, put on our Christ, and let us listen to today's word. This week we will hear several accounts of what happened in the days following Jesus' death and resurrection. Mary Magdalene and Mary were going to Jesus' tomb to visit and pray. Pontius Pilate had ordered the tomb to be sealed with a large stone and placed guards there to block intruders. The woman did not expect what they found at the tomb. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, came and rolled back the stone, and sat on it. He, his appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, and he, as he said, Come see the place where he lay. He has been raised from the dead and is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So at every turn, Cardinals, Jesus continues to fulfill the prophecies and all the things that were said about who the Messiah was and I love the moment after Easter where Jesus continues to reveal himself after he's been resurrected um, making like visits to earth to visit even though he already ascended into heaven he makes these uh, appearances on earth and so Cardinals I pray that you and I come to recognize I think it was my first Holy Communion, I was at CCD, and my teacher shared uh, a moment with me that I'll never forget. So remember, I'm already, uh, you know, I'm already getting ready to turn 50 Cardinals, and it was in third grade that I recall this message. Um, as my teacher says, you never know when you're going to encounter Jesus. And what she was trying to help us recognize is encountering Jesus in the, in the, in the communion and then the Eucharist. But she says, you never, know, you never know when you're going to encounter Jesus in the flesh. What you're going to hear in these stories that come forward the rest of this week is that the disciples did not recognize Jesus after he reappeared, after his resurrection. But after some of his gestures and his sayings, they recognized that it was Jesus. He just came in a different form. And I remember my third grade teacher sharing that you never know when you're going to encounter Jesus. And the hope is, is that our spiritual eyes are open for us to recognize those little bitty moments when Jesus makes himself present to you and I. Many people don't even recognize it. But for those of us who are awake or enlightened, so to speak, by way of our spirituality and, and awareness and our spiritual eyes are opened, you have those moments where after a circumstance or situation has passed, where people either recognize Jesus in the moment, or as soon as it's over, they recognize that they were in Jesus' presence. And Cardinals, what a beautiful and amazing thing. One, grateful to my teacher who shared that with me, and two, grateful for the experiences I've had, where after the moment had passed, I recognized that Jesus was there, was present. It's just something you know, something you feel, and it's, it's a beautiful thing, and I hope to get to that point where I come to recognize when Jesus is truly present in the moment. Amen. And so let us continue, Cardinals, on our journey of faith, uh, becoming more aware spiritually so that way God can reveal himself all the more to you and I. Just as when I look at St. Charles School and I look at all the love that's being exchanged, the friendliness, the mercy, and, and all the good things that come about that are of God, that I see God and I see Christ at work and I see the Spirit moving all the time, Cardinals. So it's an honor, it's a blessing, it's a privilege to be able to be part of this community and see God at work uh, in the lives of so many people, and that is you, Cardinals. So thank you for being a blessing. 
Thank you for allowing God to move in your life and be an instrument uh, by way of, of being Christ for one another. Amen. So God bless you and thank you. Keep up the great work, Cardinals. Hope and pray you have a wonderful day. God bless.